Caitlin Clark is probably the most polarizing figure in women's sports today, potentially even overshadowing the WNBA itself with her popularity. That being said, growing up, Caitlin Clark didn't just excel on the basketball court. She was a soccer sensation too, and she was so good that she almost went pro. But ultimately, she chose basketball, a decision that greatly impacted both her life and the sport. Despite her swift rise and positive influence on the WNBA, many of her colleagues seem to hate her. But why? And during her early life, what led her down the road of potentially becoming the greatest women's basketball player ever? These are the questions we'll be answering and more, as we look back at Caitlin's epic rise to stardom in the WNBA. Before Caitlin Clark was a basketball phenomenon, she was just a kid growing up in Des Moines, Iowa. Much like many professional athletes, Clark comes from a sport-focused family. Her father, Brent, was a two-sport athlete at Simpson College, while her older brother, Blake, played college football for Iowa State. Growing up in a household where sport is played every single week means Caitlin was always going to be an athlete. What might surprise you to hear is that despite now becoming one of the best female basketball players in the world, Caitlin was not a specialist athlete growing up. From a young age, she played a variety of sports, including softball, volleyball, soccer, tennis, and golf. Her parents had her playing sport from a very young age. And the truth is that basketball wasn't the only sport Caitlin excelled in. In her early basketball days, she competed against boys from a young age, as her father couldn't find a girls' league for her age group. At just five years old, she could dribble a basketball and showed off her basketball IQ well beyond her years. That competitiveness was built into Caitlin from an early age, and you can certainly still see that today. But it was not just basketball where Caitlin Clark could have gone on to be professional. She was an extremely talented soccer player, having picked the sport up from a very young age. As an 11-year-old, Clark was in a 9v9 tournament championship game while playing for West Des Moines Soccer Club. And during the championship game, just after her team had gone a goal down, Clark had a crazy idea to shoot straight from kickoff. She took the shot, which left the keeper scrambling before the shot was declared a goal. And along with her elite level shooting as a soccer player, her coaches praised her for her spatial awareness and quickness to make decisions, also claiming she could play professionally if she so chose. But the problem was, her basketball stardom continued to grow. But despite Caitlin being a basketball phenom, she was also a massive fan, always going to watch Dowling Catholic girls basketball games before she ended up playing for the school. She was also a big WNBA fan, with Minnesota Lynx superstar Maya Moore being her idol growing up. As she had been playing against girls much older than her for years, the step up to varsity basketball was not an issue at all for Caitlin Clark. As a freshman, Clark averaged 15.3 points, 4.7 assists, and 2.3 steals per game, while leading her side to the state final. As a high schooler, she was already getting international attention, heading to Argentina in 2017 for the FIBA Under-16 Women's Americas Championship. Alongside countless other future WNBA stars, including 2023 WNBA Rookie of the Year Leah Boston, Clark helped the USA win the gold medal. What might surprise you to hear is that even during this time, Clark was still playing soccer and was still considering a career in the sport. The thing that really stuck out about Clark was that she could produce magic in any given moment on the soccer field, just like she does now on a WNBA court. She was always the best player on the field and was impossible to stop. At 13, she was playing in a state cup final and took over the game to score two wonder goals. A year later, a 40-yard screamer gave her side the win, and it was crazy to see the potential that Clark had, even while she was starting for the basketball team of her high school. And it was clear to Clark and her family that she was the definition of a two-sport athlete. J.P. Pearson, who was Clark's soccer coach for around six years, had hoped that Clark would attend tryouts in March 2017 for Dowling, and it led to Clark playing soccer for her first two years of high school. But Clark's basketball career meant she couldn't always play soccer, appearing only 13 times as a freshman. So you would be shocked to hear that Clark still scored a ridiculous 23 goals during those 13 outings, becoming the only freshman that year to be named first-team All-State. Pearson put it plainly, 
saying that she was easily Division I material if Clark decided to pursue soccer instead of basketball. She was a lethal goal scorer who could have been a superstar in a whole different sport. But a 2-0 loss to West Des Moines Valley in 2018 would be Clark's final soccer game as her college recruitment started to ramp up, and it just didn't make sense anymore for her to continue playing soccer, particularly with how good she looked on a basketball court. Anyways, her sophomore season saw Clark's basketball numbers explode with her new school, Dowling Catholic, averaging 27.1 points per game putting her second in the state for scoring. She had joined the All-Iowa Attack in AAU basketball around this time and led them to the Nike Elite Youth Basketball League Championship. Across her final two seasons of high school basketball, Clark averaged more than 30 points per game, being named Iowa Gatorade Player of the Year as a junior and Iowa Miss Basketball the following season. She hadn't just put herself on the map. Caitlin Clark was a phenom. While Caitlin Clark developed into a superstar during college, she was already highly touted before even heading to Iowa. In seventh grade, Clark was already getting college offers, and by the end of her magnificent high school career, she was a five-star recruit and one of the best players in the 2020 class. She had plenty of top offers for college, and it seemed like Notre Dame were the favorites. What we now know is that Clark's family wanted her to commit to play her college basketball for Notre Dame. They wanted her to follow in the footsteps of WNBA stars Ruth Riley and Arike Ogunbowale. Clark's high school head coach, Kristen Meyer, even thought she was heading to Notre Dame, before shocking everyone to choose Iowa. I think it is more than fair to say that she made the right decision by going to Iowa instead of Notre Dame. Caitlin fit into college basketball perfectly, and made limited adjustments to her game. She impressed enough to be the starting point guard from day one, and that limitless range was clear straight away. In just her second ever college game, Caitlin Clark posted a 30-point, 13-assist performance in a victory over Northern Iowa. She became a superstar in that first season, as Clark went on to lead Division I in scoring, and finished second in assists, and second in three-pointers per game. She was the unanimous Big Ten Freshman of the Year, and the first freshman to win the Don Staley Award as the best guard in the country. That season immediately put Caitlin Clark into the stratosphere when it came to superstardom. She backed her rookie year up with another brilliant sophomore campaign, once again leading the nation in points, and this time also in assists. She was the first back-to-back -back recipient of the Don Staley Award, and was unanimously named Big Ten Player of the Year. She was dominating women's college basketball in a way that we haven't really seen before. Women's basketball is often controlled at the college level by juniors and seniors. So to see Caitlin Clark excelling from day one was a sign of her future brilliance. She continued to excel on the international level at this time, helping the USA win the Under-19 World Cup in 2021, a tournament in which she was named MVP. Over the last two years, Caitlin Clark has become the biggest name in women's basketball. It started with a record-breaking junior season that almost ended early because of an ankle injury. She battled through the pain and ended up having one of the best seasons in women's college history. That included a 41-point performance against undefeated defending champion South Carolina to break their 42-game winning streak. That season, she won Old Major National Player of the Year awards and was the first unanimous National Player of the Year in Big Ten history. The following season saw even more examples that Caitlin Clark was destined to be a superstar. She set countless records including the single season leader in points, points per game, assists, and three-pointers made in Iowa Hawkeyes history. She became the leading scorer in NCAA women's basketball, as well as the first woman in NCAA Division I history to score 1,000 points in multiple seasons. On the court, her game has continued to be at a very high level, with Clark being the undisputed number one overall pick in the 2024 WNBA draft. But truth is, her impact on the game went way beyond just her individual accolades, where she helped facilitate unprecedented growth for women's basketball, which carried over to the WNBA. The attention that Caitlin Clark has brought to women's basketball is unlike anything we have ever seen before. It started with her college basketball career, and there are plenty of fans tuning in to watch the WNBA for the first time thanks to Caitlin Clark. The 2024 National Championship game might not have been the result that Clark was looking for, but it was the most viewed women's college basketball game in history up until that point with almost 10 million viewers. 
She also had countless sold out games across her spectacular college career, with the 2024 Big Ten tournament selling out for the first time ever. It wasn't just the fans giving Caitlin Clark and women's basketball much more attention. The national media loved watching Caitlin Clark. She got coverage from every single major news outlet across the country, and even some international experience. 2024 was a great sign of her popularity, and the general popularity of women's basketball. A record-breaking 19 million people watched the 2024 National Championship game, making it the most watched basketball game in five years, even including men's college and NBA games. Absolutely incredible. She might be the biggest star in basketball at the moment, and it really comes down to two things. The first is not just the fact that Caitlin Clark has broken countless records at every single level she has played at, it's the way Clark does it. Steph Curry became the favorite player of an entire generation because of his limitless range across the court. Every kid growing up in the 2010s wanted to launch long range jumpers because of Steph. Caitlin Clark is doing the exact same thing right now. Her shooting range is incredible, with many analysts calling Clark the greatest offensive player in women's basketball history. She plays exciting basketball, and it makes it near on impossible to not watch. Even in her brief stint in the WNBA, Clark is producing some phenomenal basketball. Similarly to the way that Steph Curry changed the landscape of men's basketball, Caitlin Clark is having a transformative impact on women's basketball, while also being one of the best players we have ever seen. That is what makes for such great TV and brings huge crowds to her games for the Indiana Fever. The second thing that makes Caitlin Clark watchable is simple, hate. When you make basketball look as easy as Caitlin Clark does, it creates plenty of haters. In 2023, her rivalry with LSU star Angel Reese led to plenty of trash talk between the pair, capturing even more fan attention. Now in the WNBA, there may be even more hate coming her way from both current and former players who want to see Caitlin Clark knocked down. But this only makes her more loved by basketball fans. The fact that she remains unfazed despite obviously being subjected to cheap shots and clearly being targeted. Caitlin Clark is a once in a generation talent who has the potential to be one of the most polarizing figures in all of sports. Despite the fact she has broken countless Division I records and brought more fans to the WNBA than any player in the league's history, she still gets like plenty of hate. Not just from fans, but even from legends of the women's game. Diana Taurasi said Clark would struggle in the WNBA compared to her college dominance, and oh, how wrong she proved to be. While Lynette Woodward said that Clark didn't break her scoring record in the NCAA because Clark had a three-point line. Those legends of the game are very clearly not too keen on the fact that Caitlin Clark's name is already being thrown around in the GOAT conversation. Some people believe that her hype is too much because Clark couldn't get her Iowa Hawkeyes side a national championship despite going to the finals twice. Some people don't like the fact that Clark can show a lot of confidence on the court. She loves to trash talk and celebrate, which has seen her get targeted on multiple occasions already in the WNBA. And there's no doubt this will only continue to worsen. In Caitlin's short time in the league, she has already broken records most recently, scoring the most threes in a game by a rookie with seven, and expect her records to continue to pile up, and the hate to continue to pile up simultaneously. But what do you think? Does Caitlin Clark get more hate than she deserves? And if so, why do you think this is the case? Put your thoughts in the comments down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching Sports Fear, and we will see you next time.